homomorphisms work, help us to understand how groups can be compared one with another. And in particular, how does everything we know about homomorphisms, and that includes what we know about the kernels of homomorphisms, the images of homomorphisms, the factor groups of domains by their kernels, and what the first isomorphism theorem tells us, how does all of that conspire to give us a way to count how many homomorphisms I can have from one group to another group? This often comes in the form of just determining whether there is even more than one homomorphism from a given group to a given group. In other words, does a non-trivial homomorphism exist? So we can always send every element from the domain to the identity element in the codomain and get a trivial homomorphism. But when a non-trivial homomorphism exists, that can tell us something about the structure of either the domain or the target group. So in this problem, I want to take a look at how we can use these concepts sort of together in concert uh, to say something about how two groups compare. So let's start just by asking the question, uh, what do we know about homomorphisms as it relates to the orders of elements and the orders of subgroups? Um, if we can use the properties of homomorphisms that we get from those two things, uh, we should be able to say uh, a great deal uh, about how uh, one group compares to another group using homomorphism. So here's the question that I want to ask and then explore in this video. Are there, in fact, any non-trivial homomorphisms from the dihedral group of the hexagon to the alternating group on four symbols. And before we even get started with these, remember each of these groups has order equal to 12. The dihedral group of the hexagon has order two times six, and the alternating group on four symbols is order four factorial over two. Both of those are equal to 12. So these are two non-abelian groups that both have order 12. Can I find any non-trivial homomorphism from one of them to the other? So what is the nature of the information we're going to be able to use? First of all, we know how homomorphisms behave with respect to the orders of elements. The order of the image of an element is always a divisor of the order of the original element. So if my original element has order 12, its image under a homomorphism can have order 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 12. But it cannot have, for example, order 5. Right? So the order of the image has to be a divisor of the order of the original element. So we could explore this question just by listing all the elements in D6 and listing all the elements in A4 and figuring out what their orders are. This would just be a relatively busy work, but otherwise straightforward kind of exercise. Um, and then once we know this, this fact over here tells me, for instance, that I have to send the identity element to the identity element because where it goes to, the image of the order of its image has to be a divisor of one. And there's only one divisor of one to speak of. So one's got to go to one. But the order two elements of D6 could go to order two elements in A4, or they could go to the identity. But they could not go to the order three elements, according to this principle, right? Because two is not, uh, uh, three is not a divisor of two. So I know that all of these elements have got to be sent either to the identity or to one of these three order two elements. For the same reason, my order three elements can only either be sent to the identity or they can be sent to elements of order three. And my order six elements, well, those can go anywhere, right? Because their image could have order one, it could have order two, it could have order three. So this narrows the universe of possibilities a little bit, but there's still way too many options. Right? There's too much for me to choose from here to be able to determine for sure whether there is a non-trivial homomorphism, or maybe we are just ending up sending all of these to the identity and getting a trivial example. So it's much more efficient when we can get away with it to think about how homomorphisms interact not with elements, but with subgroups. And this is the key pair of observations, that the kernel of a homomorphism, which is a subgroup of its domain, is always a normal subgroup of that domain. And also, the image of a homomorphism is always a subgroup of the target group. Not necessarily normal, but we know for sure that it will be a subgroup. So, Rather than listing out the individual elements and their orders, why don't we instead make what we hope is a shorter list, which is a list of all the normal subgroups of the domain. These are going to be every possible kernel for my homomorphism. And a list of all the subgroups of the target group. This is going to be the list of all possible images for my homomorphism. And D6, well, the trivial group, the trivial subgroup, as well as the whole group, those are always normal. Um, but D6 also has these other three other normal subgroups in the middle. And I know we've seen a few of these on our quizzes and in our uh, class activities, right? This turns out to be a full list of all the normal subgroups of D6. On the other side, um, A4 has only three normal subgroups. Itself, the trivial subgroup, and then also the, uh, the, the Klein 4 uh, subgroup. So the trivial and then the three elements of order 2 together form a normal subgroup. So now that I have this list, we want to figure out which ones of these can be 
uh, which ones of these can be kernels, which ones of these can be images. And we'll come back in our next video and take a look at how to continue this thought process.